All right, Super Bell ammunition. We have some solid copper hollow points. And this is gonna be 10 millimeter versus 44 Magnum. So in the 10 millimeter, we have a 160 grain solid copper hollow point. And in the 44 Magnum, we have a 180 grain solid copper hollow point. Now what's interesting about the way I test things is I like to go through barrel lengths that are about the same. And even though this is a 5.3 inch barrel and this is a four and a quarter inch barrel, um, being a revolver, uh, we use all of the barrel and being a semi-automatic, even though it's 5.3 inch, we only use some of the barrel the way it's measured. So we have almost identical bullet travel in those guns. And this is a conversion barrel, a conversion gun. I'll explain that in a little bit here. But we're going to see what we get with 10 millimeter versus 44 Magnum. I always hear that 10 millimeter can rival 44 Magnum or it can be used in the same role as 44 Magnum. Interesting thing here is this 10 millimeter has a um, nickel plated case and the 44 does not. Typically when I see companies do that, it means that they have loaded that pretty high pressure so they know a nickel plate plated would probably crack. So that's something interesting that I'm seeing right off the bat. Um, this says 1250 feet per second on the 10 millimeter and this says 1650 on the 44 Magnum. So we're gonna go through the chronograph See what kind of velocity and accuracy we get at the same time. And then I'm going to go through my clear ballistics test. And what I have here is four layers of denim, followed by about three inches of clear ballistics, followed by one quarter inch medium density fiberboard to represent our ribs or sternum. And into more clear ballistics. And typically if the hollow points expand the same, this takes away about two inches of this. But this gives us a real world rib simulation. So we'll shoot it with this and without this and we'll see if there's a difference. And then I'm going to do some practical accuracy drills uh, at my full size steel silhouette. So I'll start from 25 yards and just see what kind of accuracy we get with these. All right, I'm about five yards from the target, four yards from the chronograph. And first up, we have the 10 millimeter. I said I was going to explain about this. And this is a conversion gun. So what that means is this is a Glock 41 and 45 ACP. The reason why I converted this over versus something else is because a 5.3 inch barrel gives me like a pretty much a perfect comparison to a four inch revolver. So rather than get a six inch barrel or a 4.7 or inch or whatever, a Glock 20, I got this converted over. So because this is a conversion, the feed ramp is kind of small. Um, I've swapped everything out. I've put on a 10 millimeter magazine, a 10 millimeter extractor. I have a 22 pound guide rod and spring. I have a conversion barrel. So all of those things make it a little bit less than reliable, but that does not affect its terminal performance. The barrel still shoots the rounds very fast. So another thing here is these are solid copper rounds and historically I've had issues with chronograph reads. So I have colored the ones I'm gonna chronograph with black marker to try to help it out. So if we have chronograph reads, that's the reason why. Or, chronograph read errors I should say so let's see if I get a read with this 10 millimeter I think it said it was right at 1250 feet per second let's see what we get 1237 1287 1254 1281 1231, very accurate, and they weren't lying about that velocity. That seems about right. Let's see how the 44 mag does. All right, 44 mag, we're rated at 1650 feet per second. However, most companies do not rate 44 mag on a four inch barrel. So I certainly would not be surprised if we got a lot less than 1650 feet per second, but we'll see what we actually get. If we can get some reads. 1438 1401 1435 I pulled that one off the sensor so it didn't read 1429 so pretty consistent Case ejection is a little sticky, and that's what I was thinking, you know, when they load these up to max pressure, they're going to want to use brass so it doesn't crack nickel plating, but that causes it to really expand in there. 
So let's hit our ballistics gel block with the MDF and without the MDF with both of these and see how they perform. All right, 10 millimeter, we can see it has a massive hollow point cavity. One thing I really like about uh, solid copper hollow points is they typically seem to be barrier blind. So whether you hit something hard or not, they seem to be designed to expand. So let's see what we get with the 10 millimeter through our gel block here, through the MDF. Not much felt recoil after shooting that 44. So even though my, my impact here was here, it wasn't that far to that corner. It blew the entire corner off. That's impressive. All right, so we impacted, and it looks like we drifted up just a little bit. But what we're looking at here, as we're looking at our damage path, is at about 12 and 3 quarters. So that's about 14 and 3 quarters. That's pretty ideal. So I'm going to try to hit right above that with the 44 mag and see how that compares to our MDF. All right, 44 mag. Let's see what this will do. Awesome. And I hit a little bit to the side of that. I still had a really solid hit on here. It's chipping away at this. All right, it moved this rear block a good inch. <laughs> and we did not pass our cross bullet paths or anything like that. Huge expansion. We're at 13 inches. So that would be like 15 inches, typically. Not always. Um, but because these look like they fully expanded, we probably will get close to that without our MDF. So let's try it without our MDF and see how these compare. All right, no medium density fiber board, 10 millimeter. Let's see what this does and straight gel after going through denim. All right, that's interesting. It arced down, so our, <laughs> I have to move this up to where it rested originally. So our original 10 millimeter was, you know, looks like 12 and a half or something. Um, this one's damage path goes to about 16 and a half. So it's a little bit different of an equation because it looks like with this one, the expansion's different. Very different, actually. So that plays a part in that. And it's not an exact science, but what we can see is what I was thinking would happen is we are barrier blind because these are expanding huge. So if our 44 mag, if that equation's right, we should get similar penetration, but we're, we won't know until we try. So let's try the 44 mag in plain gel. All right, 44 magnum through the denim and gel with no MDF. See what this does. So what we're seeing again is this one's pretty close. You know, we had 13 inches before. And this one's about 15 and three quarters. So our equation is pretty similar. Big old star pattern there. So overall, both of these did excellent. So whether you hit a rib shot or a gut shot, it's not gonna matter because these things are designed to open up huge, you know, with or without hitting a hard barrier. So that's very excellent ammunition. And our recoil was pretty much pretty optimized for that 10 millimeter, very light recoil. 44 had a bit much, but it was not unbearable. So let's shoot from a little bit of distance and just see what kind of accuracy these guns will have. All right, 25 yards to my steel silhouette. I'm just gonna shoot center mass. I'm just gonna slow fire this just to try to get the best accuracy that I can get. 
So let's see what we can get with this 10 millimeter aiming center mass. 25 yards. First malfunction, which for this gun is not bad. Alright, excellent accuracy. That's exactly my point of aim. So that's pretty good, um, except for one I pulled. Um, let me try the 44. Alright, 44 mag. My accuracy will probably be less because I'm going to flinch a little bit on this. It's pretty hot, but let's see what I can get. I was thinking my accuracy opened up a lot, but that hits hard. Now let's go back from 50 yards and see how it how they do. All right, 50 yards for my target. Some people might ask, why 50 yards? Well, when you start getting into full size handguns, and you're talking 10 mil, 44 mag. They're not just defensive rounds; they're also animal defense or hunting rounds. So, 50 yards, 10 millimeter center mass. See what I can do. Another malfunction because of this pistol conversion. I pulled that one. All right, let's try the 44. All right, 44 mag, 50 yards. See how this shoots for me. I'm pulling those. Yep. So they were hitting just a little bit to the right for me, so I had to compensate a little bit. So I got a few more rounds, back it up to 75 and see how they do. All right, 75 yards. Now this scenario is gonna be a little bit different from this distance, 75 yards. All I got is my Glock pistol and 10 millimeter conversion. I'm hungry, we don't have any food. I gotta take a deer, it's 75 yards. So there's a deer there. I'm gonna aim and take my time on these shots, see if I can hit that silhouette. Miss. I'm not exactly sure where those are hitting, uh, but that distance is getting a little bit difficult for me with this Glock. Let me try the 44. All right, 44 mag. Got my ears and eyes on. I see a deer. I'm going to say I got to cock this hammer to get as much accuracy as I can get. I'm stalking it. I'm going to relax and try to get it. So here we go. Completely pulled that shot. So again, this these are shooting a little bit at that distance, a little bit to the left for him, or the yeah, the right. So aimed a little bit left. So that's just how it is. Um, Super Val, 10 millimeter versus 44. What I'm seeing is it's all very good ammo. Um, very consistent velocities, very consistent ballistic performance, and at reasonable distances, very consistent accuracy. So that's a win-win. So that's pretty good ammunition if you can find it. I know Supervel doesn't produce it all that often. They'll do a few lots and then they'll quit for a while and they'll do it again. But if you can get your hands on this stuff, it seems pretty good. So that's what you get today. So as always, comment, share, and like, and thanks for watching. Yeah.